Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues. Today we find ourselves in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And years ago, a guy named Ben Franklin said that leaping and wrestling should be a core part of the, uh, the experience at Penn. Here to talk about leaping and wrestling is Roger Reyna. Round two for Reyna. He joins us now. Roger, how are you? Doing just great today, Scott. Thank you. Leaping and wrestling. He identified those two uh, endeavors, athletic endeavors, as to be very important to an athlete's uh, uh, experience at, uh, at Penn. Why leaping and wrestling, do you think? Yeah, it was actually a, a little bit broader than that, but Ben Franklin wrote the proposals on the education of youth, really, in our country. Uh, it led to the formation of the University of Pennsylvania, but it was running, running swimming, leaping, and wrestling. But really, the idea you know, echoes back to sound mind, sound body, better life. And that's and, what. Uh, and so, part of the overall educational experience that, you know, physical activity and education and yeah. wrestling would be part of that. Does Dr. Calhoun uh, endorse the, the basic premise of what, what, uh, what Ben Franklin was talking about? It, interestingly, it's actually engraved in the woodwork of Waitman Hall. Uh, Waitman Hall is actually the site of the very first collegiate wrestling tournament in history in 1905. And that's where our athletic administrative offices are housed. So Roger we see it every day when we walk in. Okay, Roger Rayner, a guest. He led the Quakers originally between 86 and 2005. And, Roger, we've been friends for a, a good number of years and known each other. I've, I've looked at your career record there at Penn, 205 wins, a .649 winning percentage during your first tenure. How is that, um, and, 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 and I don't want this to be unfair to anybody, do those years compare to what the future offers for the Quakers? Well, that's an interesting question and, and one that we intend to explore, but I can't answer today, Scott. Um, I can say that there's really more support wrapped around our program than there ever has been. Uh, our alumni are tremendously passionate. You know, the wrestling as a sport has been offered at Penn since its beginnings in 1905. Uh, so we've got as long a list and as loyal a list as anyone in the country. Um, it's manifested itself in a number of different ways. Um, in addition to the collegiate program, the launch of our Pennsylvania Regional Training Center and Brandon Slay, who wrestled here and you know, competed collegiately and then on into you know, Olympic competition down in Sydney and success down there, um, as well as the past two Olympiads as a coach, eight years out at USA Wrestling. Um, and Brandon's made the commitment to come back here and lead our, our international styles through the Pennsylvania RTC. So we're tremendously excited about, about that aspect as well. So. Uh, I think the future is very bright. Um, you know, we're certainly in a tremendous wrestling hotbed in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Ohio, New York, um, and we, you know, we're really excited about what we've built and and the platform that's been created. Several of the guys that you've coached over the years, including Brett Matter and Matt Valenti, you mentioned Brandon Slay as well, have uh, absolutely risen. I mean, talk about cream rising to the top. Those guys have gotten it done. They've led Brandon Slay, perhaps the most notable. Uh, but talk to us about the importance of Brandon Slay voting with his presence, moving his family back to Penn, moving his uh, family to, to guide the regional training center, and then uh, uniting schools like Penn and Drexel together in a common effort. Can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so we're, we are partners with Drexel in the Pennsylvania RTC, and we're thrilled about that. Uh, we believe it's the only place in the country where there are two Division One programs in the same city. Our, our campuses actually um, align. They, they butt up next to each other. So um, here we are with twice the number of coaches, twice the number of athletes, uh, two uh, alumni groups you know, that are supporting this effort. So you know, we're tremendously thrilled about that. Um, and again, our 250-mile radius you know, around Philadelphia from a wrestling hotbed at the scholastic level um, you know, is really as good as anywhere in the country. Um, so, you know, and for us too, Scott, I, I think it's important to point out that, you know, having Olympic level wrestlers around our program uh, isn't new. You know, we go back to the days of Dave Schultz uh, being here and, you know, the wrestlers that competed, uh, that trained with Dave, that competed during that time frame. Um, Dan Shade was a longtime assistant coach here at Penn. Brian Dolph, who, uh, you know, was Olympic trials finalist in 2000, actually met Brandon uh, in the finals of the Olympic trials down in Dallas. Um, and so we had a period of time, you know, during the eight, late eighties and nineties, you know, when we had a number of Olympic level guys, uh, another one who I mentioned, 
uh, you know, Trevor Lewis, you know, very high ranking administrative position at the university now. Uh, Trevor was an 11 time Olympic level open all American in freestyle. Um, and then in 96, when Dave was killed, tragically, uh, we came together in an in a office just down the hallway from our wrestling facility here. Um, and Dan Gable actually, you know, worked with us in, in the understanding how the creation of the Hawkeye Club um, was built and its bylaws. And, you know, working with a number of the guys that had trained with Dave, you know, we uh, worked with the Schultz family and Nancy and, and created the Dave Schultz Wrestling Club. Uh, which ran through, you know, the 96, the 2000, and then the 2004 Olympic Games. Um, and in 2000, there were three Schultz Club Olympians down in Sydney. Uh, one was Brandon Slay, another was Kerry Colat, um, who had been befriended by Dave at training camps at a very young age, and, and Kerry was uh, loyal throughout his, his training experience, always representing the Schultz Club. Uh, and then Heath Sims from California, Greco athlete, um, also on the, the U S team down in Sydney. Um, so for us, you know, there were really, you know, decades where we had Olympic level athletes involved with our program and, you know, we're thrilled to have launched this new entity with the Pennsylvania RTC, uh, to continue that legacy. Interesting, uh, turn of events and, and in a small world, as you and I were talking prior to the interview yesterday, I spent the day with Dan Gable. Yesterday was the birthday of David Schultz. Uh, would have been 58 years old had he been living today. And uh, and then, of course, you mentioned Heath Sims. I interviewed him yesterday, live from Singapore, uh, continuing to make an impact, this time on the other side of the world, as it were, 13 hours away from uh, where we are in Iowa. But it is a small world. The, the, the world of wrestling, uh, and it is a family, make no mistake about that, it is a family of of goal setters and people who are looking to achieve, and you've been one of those guys. You're the winningest coach in Penn Wrestling history and a Hall of Famer. Um, it's not like you took uh, too, too many steps away. You've been a Penn Athletics Administrator for the last two years. Can you tell us how uh, your return to the head coaching position actually happened without going into too much detail, but maybe in generalities? Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, in, in the establishment of the RTC, um, you know, I worked with several of our alumni, and this was August of 2014. Uh, and that really brought me back around Penn and Penn Wrestling. Um, and so, you know, I currently serve as, as president and chairman of the board of the Pennsylvania RTC. And that was the initial, you know, kind of launch back into the, you know, the competitive aspect of coaching. Um, I coached Richard Perry through the Olympic trials in 2000 and, you know, got back involved um, you know, at that level from a coaching standpoint. Uh, but the administrative role at Penn that I've been involved with has, has been very exciting, very interesting. Uh, so the, the title is the Senior Associate Athletic Director for External Affairs. So really all of our athletic departments, marketing, communications, uh, and all revenue that was non-donations, don, non non-philanthropic, um, you know, fell under my team. Uh, so it's been a very exciting time um, and, you know, to work with Matt Valenti, who's also uh, an athletic administrator now, who's a you know, three-time All-American, two-time NCAA champion in wrestling for us, um, and had to have wrestlers involved with the administration, you know, I think has uh, is further bolstered support around the program. Um, so, you know, when the, the recent change made was made and um, Alex resigned, Alex Tirapelli resigned, I was approached uh, as to whether I would be interested in coming back to be the head coach. Um, and you know, that wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't initially my plan or intention at all in terms of coming back, uh, to Penn. It was really the administrative efforts. Um, but, you know, having, you know, coached Richard Perry and other, you know, senior RTC guys, you know, here at the Pennsylvania RTC, um, you know, the fire's still there. And, you know, I was really excited, uh, to consider the opportunity after being approached. Um, you know, I was very respectful of our athletic director, Dr. Calhoun, as to whether she felt this was a good idea. And, you know, we had you know, a number of discussions with her, um, you know, the transfer of these areas that I've been managing uh, are not insignificant, uh, but Grace was very supportive uh, and really left me a lot of room to think about, you know, what was in my heart, you know, in terms of making this decision. Uh, and at the end of the day, you know, I felt that this is absolutely the right direction for me, you know, the right direction for our program. And uh, Dr. Calhoun has been tremendously supportive through the process. So that, that's really how it came about. Your father uh, was a, a, a lifelonger at, uh, at Penn as well. He was chair 
of the anthropology department, how you did not follow in those footsteps is beyond me. But um, I don't know. I, he, may, he may have even known Benjamin Franklin. I, I don't know that for a fact. But historically, Roger, I would say uh, this has been a lifelong pursuit of excellence for you and uh, apparently your siblings as well. Can you talk to us about a life at Penn? Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, my father uh, passed away this past December. It's been a hard year for our family. Uh, he lived an amazing life, Scott. He, you know, came to the United States, uh, you know, as an immigrant, hundred dollars in his pocket, and not really speaking the language. Um, you know, flew from Argentina, where he was born and raised, to Miami, and took a bus up to the University of Michigan. Um, and his experience was, you know, making a life, um, you know, in this country. Um, Everyone else in the Reina family you know, remains in Argentina, um, and he set up his life here. Uh, my mother was born and raised on a small farm in Montana. So while our roots have been here in southeastern Pennsylvania and largely around Penn, as you mentioned, you know my family is really you know from you know across the you know across North America and uh, and on into South America with my father's side. So they met at the University of Michigan. My father um, you know got a teaching job here as a professor in anthropology. Um, and rose through the ranks and um, chaired the department, you know, through really a heyday, you know, producing more PhDs in the field, you know, than anyone else, um, you know, at the university. So he was very involved in mentoring youth and, you know, developing um, academics and educators to go on and teach. Um, you know, my mother and brother also very involved in education. So you know, I think Penn's provided that platform for us, you know, in a, in a number of ways. And you know, for so many alumni that have come through here and our current student athletes um, to really step up on the highest level academically. You know, the Wall Street Journal has Penn ranked as the number four university you know, in the nation. Um, and we're very proud of the academic um, standing of the institution and at the same time, you know, very practical approach to education. Um, I, th I, th I think the Wall Street Journal, uh, given its recent inaccuracies, uh, should be given a break in this regard because, I, quite frankly, the difference between number four and number one is slight, <laughs> and depending on the day, uh, number one and number four can easily exchange places. We're talking with Roger Reyna. He is the new head coach, and, and I never thought I would say that, Roger. I really didn't. He's the new head coach of uh, the Penn Quakers program and returning to a, a place that uh, I never thought you would leave initially and when you did i was shocked but now coming back your career is confounding me roger i gotta tell you well i tell you I've, I've gotten that question quite a bit and you know when i did step down from coaching um in 2005 um it was very hard to leave in a lot of ways you know the the juniors in that class this was matt valenti's class and matt harrington's class uh, I think it was Win Magazine had them ranked as the number one recruiting class in the country. And that was our juniors and you know, the freshmen that I, I recruited, my last recruiting class, but one I never coached. You know, they were the number four ranked recruiting class in the country. Um, and so, you know, we, we were, you know, I think in a place where the program was in tremendous, tremendously good shape, very exciting competitive times. But Scott, I had I have two young children at the time. They were nine years old and seven years old. Uh, my son, David, named after David Schultz, um, you know, nine, my daughter, Lindsay, seven. And it was just a point in life where it was really important for me to to be spending time with my kids instead of other people's kids. Um, when I got the job at Penn as head coach, the first time I was 24 years old, uh, I was the youngest Division One coach in the country at the time in any sport um, and I had a, a tremendous run and a set of experiences that are really just priceless. I wouldn't change for anything in the world. Uh, but as I looked at my children, nine and seven, I really wanted to dedicate, you know, that next, you know, period of time as they got through high school and on into college, you know, to them and to and to share those experiences with them. And um, I, I don't regret it. It was difficult to move away from Penn Wrestling at the time. But, uh, you know, when you talk about family, and you talk about kids, it was, you know, uh, it was absolutely the right decision. And, and I feel great about having done it at the time. We're talking with Roger Reyna. Roger, your dad, Ruben, was chair uh, of that uh, department, the anthropology department, and curator at the museum from 57 to 90. Did that require a lot of travel on his part? It did. He did uh, quite a bit of his field work in Guatemala um, and uh, you know, also in Argentina. We actually lived in Argentina for a time when I was very young. We lived in Guatemala, and I guess I was the kid, you know, 
wondering why we had to go to all these places when all my friends were <laughs> at the pool riding bikes and playing sports. And, um, and, but yet I look back on it and it was just a tremendous experience, you know, to see the life through an anthropologist and he was a cultural an anthropologist, Scott. So he was really understand, you know, understanding cultures, understanding, you know, systems and organizations of, of people. And, um, you know, it, it really created a lens for me to, to look at organizations, to look at teams, you know, in a really unique way. And, you know, I look back with tremendous fondness of those trips, you know, and some of the things we saw growing up that were really unique. How affected was your father by the cultural landscape of Argentina with Ava and Juan Perón, um, the whole search for democracy at a time when the world seemed to be upside down? But uh, how, how affected was your father by that landscape? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think he sought um, to come to the United States really for the, you know, the intellectual freedom and the academic freedom, which, you know, he didn't grow up with. And, um, and I think that, you know, he, you know, he made a very clear decision, you know, to, to not go back to, you know, to make the United States his home. And I think it was shaped by those very difficult times, um, very difficult political times, very difficult, difficult economic times in Argentina over the years. Um, so he was the only one from his family to come up and, um, you know, we have a, you know, a great large family that, you know, we keep in touch with, um, in Argentina, but, um, uh, you know, but my dad made the decision. The United States was his home. The cowboys in the United States are called cowboys. What are they called in Argentina? Uh, trick, yeah, gauchos, of course, Scott. <laughs> it was a trick question. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I refer to it as Eva, but, uh, Eva Perón, but, uh, Avita. Uh, perhaps uh, more formally, and uh, it's a, tr a tremendous story, but it was a, a time in Argentina that uh, has fascinated me, uh, even as a youth, and I've, I've done uh, en enormous studies on, on Argentina as a country and the people, wonderful, wonderful people, uh, and I'm so glad things are, are better in that country, even as they search and continue to search as we do for, uh, you know, a traditional respect for its people. So uh, thank you for asking or answering the questions I have about Argentina. Penn Wrestling, obviously, is in a very good place right now. Uh, can you tell us what the coaching staff looks like for now and in the future? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Brandon's going to remain in his role as the head coach and executive director of the Pennsylvania RTC. Uh, and really, I think that reflects our commitment to freestyle and the international styles. Uh, so we are absolutely about, you know, training the local community, those high school wrestlers that qualify for the RTC, our collegiate wrestlers, both here at Penn and at Drexel, uh, and our resident athletes, three of whom are going to be competing this weekend uh, at the World Team Trials. And those include Richard Perry, Chase Pammy, and BJ Futrell. Uh, so yeah, we're, we feel great about that. Um, and then in terms of the collegiate staff, uh, Mike McMullen, who is a four-time All-American at uh, Northwestern University, but has roots here in Pennsylvania, you know, originally born and raised in Easton, uh, went to Wyoming SEM, um, and then off to Northwestern and, and back here to Penn to complete his master's degree, has been doing just an absolutely outstanding job with the team. Uh, so Mike's going to stay on board. Uh, our second assistant position actually just got posted today, uh, so we'll be taking applicants for that. Um, and once that position's in place and we determine, um, you know, what other needs uh, there are for the program from a weight class perspective, but also from a talent perspective from these assistant coaches, you know, we'll make decisions in terms of the volunteer assistant. Um, and we also have this great benefit of Matt Valenti, you know, being right here on campus, um, still active with the PRTC um, and just a tremendous technician in his own right. Um, so we, we feel very confident about the staff. We're delighted that, you know, we're retaining Mike McMullen um, and excited to see uh, you know, who the applicants are for the other, um, you know, the, the second assistant coach. Uh, we've got some people in mind. We've got, uh, you know, I think a front runner in mind, but we're also opening it up to the national search. And, and again, that job was posted just today. I think a national search is always healthy because we discover who is available, who is interested. And quite frankly, I think the the level of coaches, the quality of coaches that are out there right now uh, that are available is second to never. In other words, this is perhaps the greatest time for American coaching uh, and those that are available and working. Uh, amazing time. Roger, it's interesting to talk to you today. I really appreciate the time. Uh, your legacy at Penn, 
uh, speaks for itself. I can't wait to see what the future brings. Uh, maybe they'll induct you one more time into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Pennsylvania chapter <laughs> for your constant dedication to our sport. I think you deserve that. But I appreciate the time today to explore what um, what's going on at Penn in the career of Roger Reina. Thank you. Thanks very much, Scott. It feels like I just stepped into the circle, and it's uh, <laughs> tremendously exciting. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I got your hand raised already. <laughs> <laughs> Roger Rain has been our guest. I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching this very special Nike Hot Seat interview with Roger Rain.